joined already, it's Barry Ryan. And uh, good morning. It's not a bad day to be doing mathematics from home in my viewpoint. Um, just so we're clear on these things, these classes, usually what we do at uh, Jimmy and Martins is we say it's 9.45 registration and we start at 10. So I just don't want to make sure that students, because um, it's an hour and a half class, okay? So I'll start in a few minutes, okay? And uh, hopefully we'll make some progress and I hope you're happy. I hope you survived the storms uh, and you and your family survived the storms well. Right. So I'll just give a few minutes extra for people to be able to join on time, okay? Because it takes, you know, with systems, broadband, etc., it can take quite a few minutes. You guys haven't been at school since March 12th. But you, when I was your age, I would have been thrilled. <laughs> I would have been thrilled for a while. And then I would have gone, hang on a minute. This is, <laughs> this is probably not a good idea long term, now, is it? okay? And you guys can't communicate with me because this is open air. So, um, now what I'm going to do, now this may or may not work, okay? Because so it does. We have a system here that the guy set up and then I bought some technology myself that plugs into my iPad. This may not work though. <laughs> okay, right? If it doesn't work, we're kind of like we're we're whiteboard only. Let's see. Ah, it does. Ah, it doesn't. <laughs> so sometimes it likes it. Uh, I teach the H part as well. I teach physics, um, uh, junior cert maths, uh, leaving cert physics, leaving cert applied maths, leaving cert economics, uh, and then kind of university, Limerick Trinity, you know, as, again, just helping students uh, who are finding their courses difficult. So, uh, maths, physics, university, electrical engineering, engineering, mechanics, that kind of thing, economics, okay. So, I also teach the H part. And the HPAD students really like me using the iPad. Right. Now, unfortunately, it can sometimes be, it takes a while to get used to it, for me as well. So one question I'll be starting with. And if anybody joins late, don't worry, it's going to be a structure to this. Now, this might sound unusual. Now, there was a, there was a PDF on the, um, on the, let's say, on the website, you know, on the free site. And one of the reasons why we're giving this class, these classes is a, maybe to introduce uh, students and parents to, you know, how you use, how you log in, you know, um, is it convenient, does it work for you guys, right? Okay. One of the things we're very conscious of, we don't want everybody to have to spend an awful lot of money on new um, computers, etc. that you've already, already spent, you know, quite a bit, made quite substantial investments in. The only thing I'd say is, uh, no matter how, <laughs> is try not to watch this stuff on your mobile phone, okay? Um, a slightly bigger screen is a better idea, okay? Now hopefully we won't go to lockdown again, and we'll be back to school very shortly. But I always think this is an important question. Let me just see if I can... Yeah, that comes out clearer, okay? Now, after I do this relatively straight... Now, after I do this relatively straightforward question, what I'm going to do is give you an overview of paper one. And some of you who have been to my classes before will realise that uh, you've seen it before. But I always think, I think it's worth 10% of the marks, just to understand what... Uh, I always, I didn't mind if the teacher, when I was a kid, told me, Barry, this is what you have to achieve. But I didn't like the idea of, I'd work hard. I think I was, got to a point where that was the standard required. And then I find myself in a situation where they, where they turned around to me and said, no, now we, we've only climbed a hill, we have to climb the rest of the mountain. And I go, oh, you should have just told me how far we had to climb. Some of you have heard that analogy before. Okay. Now, I don't know if you've got that open in front of you, but it doesn't matter. Okay. We'll go back to it in a couple of minutes. Okay, the most, one of the most important basic things in maths is to... Uh, one of the most basic things is to, uh, uh, is to understand what, what the number systems are. You might be surprised, and you're only, you're very young, so, you know, to be honest with you, it's kind of like, um, you're very young, so 
it's very hard to kind of like expect you guys to organize yourselves efficiently. An awful lot of exam um, preparation is about organization. Like I've got a number of um, number of young people. They're repeating tomorrow their electrical engineering at Trinity, their second year electrical engineering. Extremely difficult. And they unfortunately didn't get the pass grade in their May exams or June exams. Well, because just like you guys, class has stopped on March 12th, right? It was this kind of like attempt to do, even for these large organizations like, you know, Trinity, an attempt to do um, online teaching. But everything was up in a heap. Even the lecturers or professors, I'm sure, were, you know, with their own families, maybe grandparents, etc. They were under pressure as well. So, so these poor young people, they unfortunately didn't get the passing grade, so they have to sit there. They, they set their engineering mathematics on Monday, and that went well. So, right, so we're kind of all in the same boat. But one thing that um, they like is, for instance, I've gone over their last past papers, and I'll take something like, let's say, it doesn't really matter, but some kind of electric circuit. And they say, in 2017, that came up. So I've got kind of a grid of how, the frequency of which the exam questions came up. And they found that very useful because then they can like uh, then they can mark off oh I've completed this I haven't completed that I've completed this okay so first thing is numbers and I'm going to use that fancy expression number systems okay. now remember this is trying to get you back into thinking about your maths okay number systems let's hope that can be legible. So I will stare into the camera, but, I'll, but obviously there's also to my right is the image that's been transmitted. And I just always want to make sure that the handwriting, etc., is uh, visible to you guys. Yeah. Okay. So for our course, what are the number systems? Well, we have natural numbers. They're the most basic. Okay. Natural numbers. And this allows, and that's got that fancy symbol. Right. Now, for those of you who don't realize, you know, most of you will, you've got your formulae, formulae August Tobley, okay, or Tobley, my Irish isn't very good, unfortunately, or the formulae and tables booklet. And now, when you go to your exam, you're asked, you can, you can request one of these. It doesn't matter if you don't have them in front of you at the moment. But on page, kids don't realize, so I'm going to hold it up to the screen. I hope you don't mind. Look, I, I actually, I miss the kids being in the room, in the classroom, because, I don't know, it's kind of like, <laughs> young Irish people are, young people are very good at making fun of me. And actually, secretly, I quite enjoy being made fun of. In, as long as it's polite, right? <laughs> you know, as, as long as it's polite. Because, um, uh, oh, it's nice to uh, get a bit of um, banter back and forth. Might as well make learning as much fun as possible. It's, you know, it's hard enough as it is. So I'm going to hold this up against the screen. Let me see if that. Uh, so I hope you can see there. See where it says n. Oh, natural numbers. And then it says z, the integers. Then it says rational numbers, and then the reals. You don't have to worry about the last one. That's not to leave insert. So kids say to me, uh, "Oh, Barry, how do I remember it?" And I said. It's on page 23, okay, right, in the formulas book. So part of the, part of the game as well is to get used to the, um, get used to how much information is actually in the book, which including your sine, cosine rules, etc. okay? So the natural numbers on page 23, that's now we're using the set notation, guys. And that's one, comma two, comma three, comma four, comma five. And I know this sounds like babyish, but in fact, actually, you know, for my sins, uh, for many years, I, I was, you know, an academic in California, etc. And uh, and then I went to UCD, University of Stuff, and then I did undergraduate mathematics and mathematical physics and theoretical physics and pure maths. Basically, it's a double double degree. And what really surprised me when I left uh, high school, to be honest with you, what really surprised me when I left high school was the hardest problems that currently exist in pure mathematics are based on this basic stuff here. All that basic means it's fundamental. Doesn't mean it's easy, okay? Doesn't mean it's trivial. Okay. 
So what are these? So the natural numbers, guys, are going to be all the positive whole numbers forever and ever. I know, again, that sounds huge. Now, one of the things that students find a bit difficult sometimes, and they like testing this, by the way, a lot of, now, after I do this question, I'm just going to give a brief overview of the structure of paper one, right? Because everybody thinks it's just algebra, algebra. It's not, okay? Comma five. And then they use these dots. And all that means, it goes on forever. It goes on to a concept that we call infinity. So imagine, uh, I give you a billion, 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 billion. You can always pick, so that's a natural number. There's no decimal. So I can always add a one to it. So I can always have a billion, 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 and one. So I can always get bigger and bigger without limit, okay? So the natural numbers are all the positive whole numbers. The integers, so the integers, and you'll see, and the other thing I found with mathematics, especially at university, is it starts off relatively easy, and I go, ah, this is okay. And then suddenly, I don't know if you guys have noticed, then suddenly it becomes sometimes quite fiendish, <laughs> right, you know, for want of a better word, you go, what happened there? I was following it, and now, now it's become all the difference. They're going to be the set, and then we use this fancy Z, and they're all the positive and negative whole numbers. What do I mean by a whole number? There's no, there's no fraction, like two and a half is two plus a half, isn't it? Okay, and that go, the three dots again, and maybe minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, one. Okay. And I'll be describing, because I think it's a good idea. A lot of students who come to me, guys, um, they don't realize the structure of the exam. They don't realize where the marks are being allocated, okay? Which is an interesting point. Right. Okay? So we'll just start with those. Now, if I write down the first 20 natural numbers, then we have another number. So this, within, now, after those, we go on to rational numbers, which are just fractions. And then the real numbers, which is just a number. And then we have these irrational numbers. So when I say rational, sometimes students go, Barry, did you say rational or irrational? And I go, it's a good point. So the rationals are fractions, basically. Don't say that in the exam. Okay. Now, if I write down, oh, and these are low-hanging fruit guys, okay? And they're vital for your algebra as well. Write down, if I write down first 20 natural numbers, So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, a bit laborious, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Again, sounds babyish, but you'll see why it's not in a few moments, I hope. Okay? And also, as I said, not, I was doing leaving certain higher maths yesterday morning. You know, because what, what, what Julie sat down with me and said, Barry, how can we give back to you? And I said, you know, with the kids going back to school, it's been quite a while since they've been in the classroom. So maybe a nice idea for the community, given what everybody's gone through, to maybe give a little primer or revisit of algebra mm -hmm. for an hour and a half. But when I put these together, I said, Mary, let's make sure you don't go into questions that are so sophisticated that it's not you lose the kids, but you just have... It's not that they're hard, it's just I don't want to kind of... I want to kind of like... I want to get marks on the board for you guys as soon as possible, okay? If we're going to do an hour and a half, we're all going to like channeling it in at 9.45, 10 o'clock in the morning. It'd be nice if we get some marks on the board. So that's why this pack here is an amalgam of the many courses I could in algebra. Also questions that I, every week that when my students come to me in, in physical classroom, there's always a printout, okay? A PDF printout, which is also sent to the parents. And I always choose the questions where I go, maybe that could get you 10% of the marks in paper one, you know? So the 10% of the marks in paper one, or 20%. So look at this question, just going back, guys, now. So I'll be jumping between the between PDF and my old 
my whole face on the on the camera. Okay. Okay. Back to this. Write down the smallest prime number. Give a reason for your answer. See this question here. See this question sixteen. That's the qu question sixteen out of the pack that's on the website. That would be. That would be seven percent of all the marks available on paper one. So that's why I want to go start with kind of going, and you will get something like this. Okay. So write down the smallest prime number. First of all, what is a prime number? That is not in the book. Okay. A prime number has a weird definition. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm leaving the uh, question up. So you can have a read of it and see how they... Also, it's getting used to the way they ask the questions in the exam. So a prime number... Now, here's... It's a positive whole number. So it has to be a natural number. Right? It has to be a positive whole number. Right? So a natural number. Whose only divisors... And I prefer to say there's only factors for itself at one. Okay? Right. So... I'm just going to have the board. Okay. Smart, I do apologize. So, prime number, usually they'll ask you to explain what a prime number is. A prime number is a natural number whose only factors are itself and one. Right, here's a question. I, I, yeah, I just remember, remember, some of this stuff is definitional, guys. So it's not about being good at maths or bad at maths. It's just about um, a bit of a memory game. Okay? So, first question you should ask yourself is, sorry, it is one a prime number? Right, is that the smallest prime number? That's, that's, where, that's why the question has been asked like this, okay? Is one a prime number? It seems to satisfy it. It's a, it's a natural number, isn't it? And what are the factors of one? One and one. So you go, well, what is a prime number? Right? Yeah. Ah. But a bunch of um, mathematicians, in the mid and they're all men, unfortunately, in the mid-19th century, got together in somewhere like Vienna, the capital of Austria. They had a big mathematical conference, all long beards, right? And overcoats, something like... Um, from Downton Abbey or something like that. They all got together and went, and they're all German, or German speaking, and they went, one is not a prime. Okay? So the trick here is, what is they're asking you to write down the smallest prime number. It'd be very tempting to say one, wouldn't it? And the course title is algebra, but this you'll see later, this is vital to the algebra. Okay. No. Now See, I could ask, now the first prime number is in fact, actually, I guess we're moving here, I'm just going to get pens. I don't want them to mark the board too much, so good pens and bad pens. Two is the first prime number. Right? Because it satisfies, it's a natural number. In other words, another way to say a positive whole number, isn't it? Okay? In other words, that has to be a natural number. Okay. Two, what are, the, what are the factors of two? Two and one. And they're the only factors. Okay. So that means two is the first prime number. So that's the answer to the first one. Now, when I was a kid, see, I'd ask questions to the teacher. You know, I, 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 maybe I was very annoying. I don't know. Maybe I was just really angry. The thing is, I'd say, well, isn't a half a factor of in other words, four by a half is two. I'm not trying to confuse anybody. Ah, but the point is, just being careful on this, it, it's only factors are itself in one. What we mean by that is the factors themselves are positive numbers. Okay? For the for the for these kind of like basic number systems as they call them. Numbers. Okay. These factors here must also the um, natural numbers. So 
again, the thing goes, if you find that in physics, and you, if you do physics at Leaving Search as well, sometimes the definitions are like, you know, you might have heard this on a TV show like Star Trek or something like that, or the Big Bang Theory or something like that, okay? Uh, you know, Newton's third law says to every action is equal and opposite reaction. That's true, but there's more, it, it, you have, it, it, it's not quite Newton's third law. So sim, sim, similarly here, I know you guys are kids, but it's better to be told, again, going back to things, it's better to be told what, what the gig is rather than um, being kind of sold a lie, okay? So two is the first one, and just to be for completeness, guys, so two is the first one, then three, five, seven. Now, eight is divisible by four, so eight has factors, eight and one, but also two and four, doesn't it? Okay, so that's not one. Nine is three by three, so that doesn't work. We know 10, 11 is a prime, 13, 14, 15, 17, and 19, okay? They don't usually go beyond that. So I can also say there's a set called prime numbers, okay? Right, fine. So at least we got some marks on the board. Now let me get rid of this. And then we can also say, and they like doing this, that we can say the set of all prime numbers. Yeah. Now what's a, now again, <laughs> going back here, right, page 23, we have, see the Q's there, uh, Q. Right. So we've got the integers, and we've got Q. Now, see, a lot of your teachers, my experience is teachers will say, well, the kids know this from first year. And the first year teachers go, the kids know it from sixth class. My experience is that's not, it's, it's not that you don't know it, it's just you've forgotten it. Okay. The rationals, you know, also called fractions, if you like. What are they? They're given this fancy symbol Q, and that's on page 23. So you don't even have to remember them. Page 23 of the formula tables. <laughs> right? Formula tables booklet. That equals the set. Now here's an interesting thing. Of all P over Q. So all fractions for the top, for the numerator, and the numerator is one above the straight line there, is, a, is an integer. And the denominator, which is the one under the straight line, is also an integer. And then for that fast notation, where P and Q are now to the sets. But in our maps at this level, you might remember your teachers telling you you can't divide by zero. Okay? And then the real number line, the next one, and if I draw here a straight line like this, remember the number line from sixth class or fifth class, that's one, two, three, minus one, minus two, minus three, okay? And that goes on forever. Do you remember that, okay? And you use that for your inequalities. That's why this is very important. We're gonna do a bit of algebra now. So we're going to enter into the algebra, like, like I always like doing physics or maths or even like, through the back door. I don't like, my teaching method is, what's my teaching method? Okay. Is to get the kids marks on the board as soon as possible. To get the students who come to me used to the exam structure. Okay. Used to the, like, if I, took a, if I took one of you guys, just say so you're the best in, best in maths in your class, or mathematics in your class, and I took you from Ireland, from the West Coast of Ireland, just say you're, you're, you're tuning in from, just say, Limerick City or whatever, you're best in maths in your class, and I took you to Boston, just say to one of the best proprietary schools in Boston. Remember, Boston is a very wealthy city, and, and probably has some of the best high schools in, in the United States. Maybe just 
is phenomenal and extraordinary by students because they've got Harvard and MIT there right? and Boston University. And just say the young woman in that class got the highest scores in maths in her class. And you've swapped positions. I'm not saying you do badly on each other's mutual exams, but the accent would change. The way the questions are asked, what they emphasize would change. Right? Like again, those uh, you know, with university students, but what I find is they, they don't pass their exams if the lecturer or professor changes the format of the exam from how he or she was doing it three years earlier. So, so understanding how they ask the questions, and that's a very good example of how they ask questions. And it's not exactly the same, even though the textbooks are excellent and written by very, very good educators, but you'll find that the, it's just the, the kind of accent or the emphasis changes. I find students go from getting like 50, 55, if they like the math, suddenly soaring to 80, 90. So I try to teach, I, I assume you're learning the course in, in, in school, or you know, you're familiar with concepts. But then we push on with the fact that, uh, but then we push on with the fact that uh, you, you do, uh, you get used to the exam. That's all I wanted to do. So like when I went to UCD, the first thing I did was went to the library. I was very lazy. I preferred the coffee shop than the library. And so, I shouldn't say that, but I do. I prefer the I far prefer the coffee shop than the library. Okay. So what did I do? I went straight to the library when I first arrived at UCD. I was like seventeen or whatever. We didn't have TY back then, and I um, I got all the past exam papers and uh, printed them out. There was no internet back then, so it tells you my age. Because I said, might as well get. Maybe it's not going to help too much, but at least I get used to how the exams are set. Okay. So, what is this? So that's the real number line. That's what they mean by real numbers. And to put it very simply, imagine the top of my, of my, uh, of the kind of the stem of my glasses here was a needle or a compass point. So if I go here, and I stick the needle. And the point of the compass. At any point along the real number line, I'll hit a real number. No matter where I put this dot, I hit a real number. Okay. But not all those real numbers will be fractions. Okay? So then we have, so that R, and some of you might remember this from your own exams in second year, etc. Then we have this concept of the irrational numbers. I actually quite like this stuff. And I, you know, it gives me great pleasure when uh, young people go from do well than that and suddenly just take it off like this. Right. And what happens is, even my applied math students, is it, it's kind of like they go like this. Oh, Barry, I, I did, I'll say, you have to, you know, I'll say, John, you have to do this problem. You know, Kevin, Mark, you know, Philip, you've got to do this problem. And they go, but Barry, when I do the problem, it takes so long, and it's so humiliating because I don't get the right answer, even though I spend so much time with it. And I said, yes, but then once they get a bit of confidence that they can do the problems, and they understand what the problems are asking, suddenly they go, I'm not bad at this, <laughs> so I'll keep on doing it. And then you get good at it, okay? That's my experience. The irrational numbers are all the numbers on the number line, the real number line, less the rationals, okay? So let's go back to the rest of that question. And then I'm going to get, get to do some inequalities. I actually think that's the easiest. And you'll see that you, to do the inequalities, you need to understand the n, z, q. Right? OK. Look at the second part, if that's legible. It's not quite, is it? Yeah, explain, what, explain why 8.7 is a rational number, is, is rational. That means it's a fraction, okay? See the way they put in bold, rational. Remember, this is seven percent of question of paper one, and every year you're going to get a question like this. Every year. I wish somebody had sat down and just reminded me of that before my junior cert because it would be. See, I would sit there and going, see, if you haven't seen it before. It's a hard question. If you've seen it before, it's very trivial. I would have found that I would have found that difficult as a kid. Because I, I what happens to me is I kind of tend to remember 
if I remember something about mathematics from high school, it's that uh, if I remember it, it must have meant I found it confusing. And there's one kid who Dennis said to me, a lovely young man, very good herder, he said to me, um, Barry, I didn't think it was an English exam. <laughs> I actually did explain why. He said, I thought we were supposed to do equations, not write down English sentences, okay? Explain why. What does it say again? Why 8.7 is a rational number. See if this works. Just yeah. So let's see if this works. I'm not going to do this much, but I do love. I'm, I'm very fond of the Apple Pencil. If it works, let's try to do it on the board so we can go a bit faster. And this will be very useful when we're doing the question center. See, so a rational number is in those cubes, isn't it? Okay. And so that must be, if 8.7 is, it must be one integer divided by another. Here's the trick 8.7 equals 87 over 10. Usually, if you were in class, it's very frustrated. I go, yeah, that makes sense, <laughs> yeah, okay. So, 87 is an element of the integers. 10 is not. And that's a rational number. But see, you can get that from page 23, see, the definition is on page 23 of the, of the tables that they hand out to you. So I go to page 23, I'd write down what a rational number definition is, yeah? And then I'd say 8.7 equals 87 over 10. 87 is a number said, 10 is a number said, therefore 8.7 is a rational number. Explain what is meant by an integer number. Well, that's on page 23 as well, as I just told you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what about that last part? Now we will go back to the board. Remember guys, and I'll leave, now after I do this, before we do the, the, the number line questions, I'll explain the structure of uh, paper one. Even if you've heard it before, don't tune out because it's always important uh, one young woman who came to me for applied maths and physics, she ended up going to, and she did the, she didn't do the hate lab with me, um, but she ended up doing medicine. And I remember bumping her into her, you know, Finn ladies or something on O'Connell Street, and she was there with her mom. And I forget which university she was for um, medicine. And she said, Barry, would you explain the structure of the physics exam and the mathematics exam? I think that was worth 10% of the marks because it structured my, uh, my revision. See, I think, you know, I know you guys are kids, but I think a part of my job, to be honest, is to, is to try and um, is give you some kind of, obviously teach, hopefully assist or teach you the maths, okay, get you better at it, or help you get better at it, but also to help you structure yourself, so that an hour of, an hour of revision with the structure that I could have would be equivalent to three hours without any structure. And that would free up time for geography, science, history, English, Irish, etc., languages. Right. Okay. So, what does this mean? Now I can eliminate everything around the board. That's cool though, isn't it? Now, when we finish the final part of this question, and this is a DEB pre, so this is kind of like regarded as the slightly harder exam. I think the junior search harder than the DEB pre, 
because because there's more English in the junior search, whereas the DD3 tends to be far more, let's say, uh, far more um, pure maths, right? Like these are, I think, for that your age group, they're easy questions. But as one student said to me, "Yeah, Mary, they're okay, but how do I express it in English, right? You know, so I know what to, I know the answer, but I seem to fumble and say the wrong thing." And you can't give away these marks. They're too easy marks. Now, look at part D. Let me just here. And while you're reading that, I think most of my students find that a bit difficult. So write down an irrational number that lies between three and four. Okay. So while you're reading that, now an irrational number, see the way in one question they've asked you See the way I'm introducing, hopefully, this is, this is the way it should be taught in order to get kids high marks in the exam, or get higher than they would have expected otherwise, is you learn all this dry definitions only, <laughs> I'm so lazy as I said, you only learn it if you think you're going to be rewarded for it. If you have older brothers or sisters who did the Leaving Cert recently, they'll tell you, on the Leaving Cert English, apparently, I love English, I love novels, I love literature, poetry, etc. But uh, on the Leaving Cert English, you get six poets, and each poet you need to know six poems. So it's 36 poems. But only two come up every year. See, that would bug me. <laughs> Back to my laziness, <laughs> because that would mean I'd have to learn off 36 poems, but I would be an exam on 12. There's at least in the maths. If, if I'm told that you learn off what a prime number is, a square number is, an irrational number is, then, and you're told it's going to come up in some way or another, okay, okay, I'll do it. Okay, because I'm going to get rewarded. So, the question asks, now remember, the irrational numbers, very important, the irrational numbers, irrational, and again, there's a lot of terminology in maths. Sometimes actually it's the lingo. So the irrational numbers are all the real numbers that can't be expressed as integers. That can't be expressed, sorry, as, as rational numbers, as cubes, as fractions. So see the way I'm using that set notation? That's cube. So an irrational number that sits between three and four. Well, see, that should prompt you immediately say, that number, that elusive number, that seems to be in some way, in some way, embedded in the structure of the universe or the cosmos itself. Right? Where does pi come up? It comes up in the circumference of a circle, or the area of a circle, doesn't it? Pi. Now, pi can't be expressed as a fraction. But it's approximately, and they love asking this, approximately 3 spot one four. Engineers, before modern computers, would have approximated as 22 over 7. The number of students have told me pi is 22 over 7. No, that's an approximation. So that's a like, trick question that students find hard. Write down an irrational number that lies between 3 and 4. It must be pi. See, that's, I, that's what I don't like about this question at the end. I don't know when I was your age, guys. I don't know if I would have found that hard or not. I can't remember. So I must have got kind of used to it. But maybe the questions were asked in a different way back then. Right, so it wouldn't have been as obvious as the problem. Okay. Now, instead of me writing it all on the board, that's what's nice about using the kind of like the, you know, there's a guy, Jeff, in the office downstairs, and uh, some of you, uh, your parents might have interacted with Jeff over the, over the time. He's been, you know, and Julie, they put an awful lot of uh, investment into, um, into, this, into the technology, right? which is fabulous, like the camera here. Apparently, Jeff told me, the camera they ordered, if you press a button, it goes infrared. <laughs> so uh, so hopefully, hopefully we won't need infrared. Um, 
but also Jeff got a router that links to the to the uh, computer box, and I'm able to kind of go like this, right, from one to another, and will I do? It? Yeah, I'll give it a go. So I can also do something like this. Does that work? No, it doesn't work on this system. And then I appear in a, a quarter of the corner or something like that. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, I can. Yeah. yeah, now you can see. See? Oh. Now you can see the here. See? <laughs> so I could be writing, so I could be talking about the maths with the. Uh, <laughs> I find that. I don't know. I'm such a geek. <laughs> I'm such a nerd. I can't get out of that. And that was all due to the. That was all due to the. Uh, staff at Nobody's gone on holiday. Everybody's been trying to get our systems up and going so that we can provide a, I don't know, make it um, as good as possible. Okay? So back to normal and back to here. Now I'm going to sit down on the chair and bring out my pen. Now, <clears throat> instead of me writing all the board, one of the misconceptions of the junior series, right, is you feel it's algebra, algebra, algebra all the time. Now, algebra is used throughout the exam, including paper one and paper two. However, this is very, very important to realize. However, algebra purely, algebra and applied algebra, only represent 50% of paper one. Okay. What, are the main, what are the main things we have to be able to do? You know, for these algebraic expressions and algebraic, um, and algebraic equations, is we need to value them multiply it and simplify. We'll do a few of those, don't worry, it's only 10, 30. Factorize, okay. solve, and chart or draw. So there are the five main skills you need. Okay? And then on top of that, we need to know what an algebraic expression and algebraic equation is, but all this stuff is on the website, okay? But then, uh, once we can do those five basic, uh, when I say basic, I don't mean they're easy, Kind of like they're the fundamental building blocks of algebra. And we also need uh, number systems that I've just state, stated. Okay? We need this concept of functions. Students get a bit kind of like worried about functions. But in fact, actually, a function is just a rule, right? And there's only three main functions, so to speak, on your course. That's the equation of the line, a quadratic, which is you know, your x squared plus minus 5x plus 4, so a quadratic, which has an x squared term. And you know those pesky exponents or indices, okay? Then that's indices, right? We're intimately linked to, sorry. We're intimately linked to number systems. And then these inequalities are basically knowing your number systems. And what do students find? And then this applied algebra is where you get something in English rather than so you have to translate some kind of scenario, you know, uh, I don't know, we'll see some of it as we go along, okay? And then what is difficult, but comes up in paper two as well. And I actually think, I, I do remember finding, I don't actually, but, I, but they must be, I must have found them difficult. Simultaneous equations, okay? Right. And then the, 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 the Godzilla, <laughs> the, the monster in the drawing room, so to speak, is Pythagoras. Everybody leaves out Pythagoras. Everybody, everybody ignores humble old Pythagoras. Uh, it comes up everywhere. Okay? It comes up in patterns. But look, as I say here, beware not all algebra. Okay? But this other 50% C okay? right. is, as we just said, numbers, inequalities, fractions, ratios, sets, Venn diagrams, speed and distance, indices, patterns, financial maths, and all importantly, thirds. Okay? okay? See, see, when students come to me, guys, they say to me, oh, Barry, I didn't do it. You know, they just say, sometimes students will come as late as post their, um, you know, to my, my regular classes. And they'll go, they'll have their, they'll have their, and they'll come to me after their mock. So let's say late February. And they'll come to me and say, Well, I failed I failed paper one, so I need some help. 
What I tend to find is, because the teachers spend so much time with this guys, they've done very well on those, right? Where do they get go wrong? These. It's that stuff. And we've just seen a numbers question that would be 7% of paper 1. So the question we just did, just re and, and we need it for everything, would be 7% out of that 50%. Okay. Inequalities might be another 7%. So it would be 14% out of the 50. Now, wh what do I find difficult, and some of you might scoff at this, and that's entirely up to you, is fractions are okay. I don't like ratios. Right. Ratios can be very tricky. Very, very, very tricky. Okay. Venn diagrams we get good at. The sets are the notations problem. What's the other one that's hard? Speed and distance. Very, very tricky. Okay. Patterns are okay. I tend to teach the patterns far more mathematically than the textbook at Junior Search because uh, no matter what you get, you've got one mathematical approach to it. It's kind of more than leaving search, but it's not hard maths. And you've just got a technique to solve every single one of the more difficult ones. And you've got to go, then you're done. So, and students come back to you and say, Barry, you know that makes sense. Financial maths I just don't like, <laughs> but it's okay. okay. There's percentages in here as well, but I'm kind of including percentages in financial maths. And these certs, I think they're okay. With just a bit of practice. Okay, so that's where I find the choke points are, ratios, speed and distance, patterns. Financial maths and suits. Okay. Now, and you'll see in my little pack that's on the, there's, there's solutions as well. Okay. And nice solutions here for um, algebra. Okay. So let's see, what am I stuck at you guys do first? Okay. Yeah. So on page nine, but you don't have to have it open. So here we're going to do an inequality, and then we're going to, I'm not sure if you read that. Yeah. Ah. Now again, these are easy. Okay. Can you, hopefully you guys can read that. So solve the following inequality and graph your solution on the number line. Now there's a little trick to these. Okay. And once you get used to, once you, some students don't like to trick it. it. Well, some of your teachers teach it one way. Some of you, most of you might know not to trick, but how to do it properly. Um, but some people like dividing up the inequality into two inequalities, but I think that's a mistake. Just from the point of view of making your life easier, okay? So this is the beginning of our algebra. And we've got to draw that on the number line that they've given below. And see the difference between the DEB pre, I mean, the, all these questions in the back of the pack are all from the mocks rather than from the junior search. Because that's going to be your, your first stumbling block, isn't it, in early February? Is the is the prius. And the next part of the question is going to be kind of throwing us a bit more deep into the deep end with um, with some hard factorizations. Again, the idea of this little mini course or this little one and a half hours a day, you get you guys back into thinking. Mathematically, and see, and just also reintroducing to you what what um, what you guys need to achieve. And I don't expect you, you know, you guys haven't done any kind of like, yeah, okay, maybe you, your, your teachers are giving you homework up to summer, but uh, you're going to the third year, so I'd say, I don't blame you, I wouldn't have either, I wouldn't say you've done much maths since then. Okay. So while you've been reading that, I've kind of drawn the number line on the board. And they go, solve the following we have quality. Minus 21 is less than or equal to, I think it says less than or equal to, yeah, 3 minus 6x. 
That's 12. That's 12. But you know there's no, and X must be an element of the, ah, uh, that's very important to see. Right. They could have said X is an element of natural numbers. They could have also said X is an element of the, uh, of the real number like. So we have to be careful there. You can't, sometimes you can ignore it. You know at the end of the question, they always have X is an element of R. You can usually ignore it, can't you? You know, you can usually go, yeah, that's not going to make much of a difference. Here it does. Right. Here it does. Right. And then, then they want me to draw from the number line. Okay. Now I just want to kind of like just remind you of a little thing about now I do remember finding inequalities. Not difficult, just I couldn't remember. I, I just so here's a little bit of a cheat sheet. Okay. Um, nine is greater than five. Yeah, we all agree with that. No, right. Yeah, nine is greater than five, isn't it? We all agree with that, okay? Now, if I, the only thing we have to know about these kind of like pointy things, these kind of pointy arrowy things or whatever, is when can I just treat them as an equal sign? When do I have to be careful with them? Well, if I take five, if I take three away from each side, so I go, so nine minus three, is that still greater than five? Minus three. Is that still greater than five minus three? Yes. Right. So I can subtract numbers from each side, and it doesn't change the, the, the it doesn't change the direction of the inequality sign. So that's still true. What if I add ten to each side? Is t nine plus ten still greater than five plus ten? Yes. That must be true. So I can add or subtract from each side. If I divide, if I multiply, let's say. by plus 2, yeah? I got 18 greater than 10. Is that still true? Yes. And also it applies that if I divide both sides by a positive number, I, it, I, it's almost like an equal sign. The only thing I can't do, right? I, wish, I wish people had just been clear with me as a kid. The only thing that I have to watch out for, I cannot do. Is multiply or divide by a negative number. So try, if somebody had just told me, put into your coffee book, Barry. <laughs> just, and I can, with total impunity, the direction of the signs remains the same, unless I multiply and divide by a negative number. And see, this manipulation, so here, what is the common factor of all these three? So let's divide. So instead of dividing this into minus 21 is less than equal to this, and then 3 minus 6x is less than 12. See, I can divide, multiply or divide by a positive number and not change the sign with impunity. So let's just divide by 3 each side. Positive 3, okay? Be careful there. And then that becomes, and never, anybody who comes to me already realizes, do not trust my arithmetic. Huh. That match the equivalent. Yeah. Okay. Now, and I can do that for all three, all, all, both, all, all three parts to, to the two inequalities. See, I'm making, what if, what if you guys, you may, may not be the course. I remember you saying to me last year, oh, no, I don't like doing that. And then I did a few of them over the weeks that you, you guys were coming to my course. And the, the young lad turned to me and said, you know, I, I prefer your method. I said, no, it's not my method. It's just, they're kind of de designed to be, in other words, he suddenly realized, it just makes life easier just to, they're designed to be answered the way I'm answering here. That's what I mean. Okay. Now, what else did I say up here with our simple rules of what I can do or can't do with them, um, with these, uh, with these uh, inequalities? I can also, I can now also subtract one. Remember. I can add or subtract, can't I? And not change the direction of the, the 
arrow thingies, right? Okay, so that gives me, so now I subtract one from each of them. So I get minus eight is less than or equal to minus two x is less than three. Uh -huh. Because I've subtracted, my, I've taken minus one from minus seven, minus one from here, so that my, the plus one goes, and less three. It's kind of one of these, again, you will get one of these questions. It may not be 7% of the exam, but it will surely be around 3.5, if not. Yeah, it could be 7%. If it's 7%, it will usually be embedded in another question. But the point is, so far, what we're doing, we could have 10%, just, just by re refreshing or reminding ourselves of this, we could have 10% of paper one. Right? Okay? That's not bad going, is it? On a stormy day. Now, I, the, the strategy is I want to isolate x in the middle. Okay. Now I've got a minus 2x, don't I? Now, here's where it can go wrong, is now I'm going to divide all three by minus 2. If I do that, though, the only thing I cannot do is multiply or divide by a negative number. If I do that, I've got to must flip the inequality signs. It's actually not that hard. It's actually, you actually don't have to even have to appreciation for moths, do you, right? It's just, okay. So the one I have here in green, guys, is the only, the only thing I have to be worried about. Now, it's still hard. So I get minus eight divided by minus two. Now that would be greater than or equal to minus two x over minus two, which would be greater than minus three. Because I'm dividing all three. Now, this you haven't done maths for a while. I always say to kids, don't beat yourself up, right? Like when I was, you know, I, again, if some of you come to my classes, it's kind of like old man disease. You repeat your own old stories, but it's not. It's actually, it's actually a very important thing to kind of realise. Is when I was a kid, if I didn't get the math straight away, I, I feel oh, I'm useless in maths. It's only in hindsight as you get older you could go. But well, that was a stupid thing to think of yourself, Barry, you know? So when I went to university again, you know, coming back to that, remember I was saying, the math starts off easy, easy, okay. It's straightforward, straightforward, I understand it, basic. And then suddenly by lecture four, you're going, hang on a minute, I'm lost now, okay? And it was only when I got lost. So I knew that, and what I mean I could follow the lecture is, I could follow what he or she was doing on the board, on the, you know, the big blackboards and the old big lecture theatres at UCD. But it didn't mean I could replicate it, but it meant I could follow her. If I could follow her and follow the logic of the argument, then I knew with practice I could replicate it or reproduce it. The problem is that I knew I had to go to the library when I couldn't, I couldn't even follow the argument. Okay? And I have started to learn that, that you're not supposed to be able to understand it straight away. But the point is, as long as you follow the logic here, yeah. and here we're doing algebra theory, okay? So what does this become? Let's just make sure I don't fall off the end of the board. No, I still have some room. Well, that's plus four is greater than or equal to x is greater than minus three over two. Now here I get to a point, I'm sure at your age, where I go, okay, I've got the mass. Now have I have my isolated x in the middle. Okay. The only thing is a few things like minus eight divided by minus two is plus four. Right? And I'll put those rules up in a few minutes. So what does that mean? So four is greater than x, and x is greater than minus three over two. You might prefer to write it as, I don't know, you could write me write this. It depends, you, you shouldn't have to, right? It, uh, I would find this difficult to interpret what that means. Put x in the middle. That means that's less than or equal to 4, doesn't it? And minus 3 over 2 is less than x. Right. So now we have to draw this on the number line. Uh, this is a db pre. They tend not to be as technical right, in the, in the actual junior cert. But you know, I give this to my leading cert students because see, they wouldn't have done these inequalities in ages. 
It's not bad at maths, it's good at maths, it's just a lack of lack of practice. Now linking what we did in number systems. Ah, but x is now to the z, isn't it? And if remember, <coughs> the z are the all, all the positive and negative whole numbers. Minus 3 over 2 is a fraction, isn't it? Okay. So, but the less than or equal to 4. So x can equal 4, can't it? And 4 is an integer. Yeah. Why is 4 an integer? See, 4 is an element of q, as well as being a natural number. Because I can write 4 as 4 divided by 1. Huh. It's a trick question, isn't it? Is 4 a fraction? Most students will go, no. No. It's a natural number. But it's also an integer. But it's also 4 divided by 1. So on my number line here, yeah. so 4 is definitely in there. Right. So x can equal 4. But it can't be greater than any number. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, on for infinity can't be in there, guys. 3 must be in there. 2, 1, 0 is an integer. Minus 1 can be a solution. Ah, but see, minus 3 over 2 is here, isn't it? Minus 3 over 2 is minus 1 and a half. And see, minus 1 and a half. So it, can't, so it has to stop there. So that's the solution to that problem, guys. I think I found those. See here, what else have I got here? I think it's a kid. I seem to remember. Probably it's because as an adult, I still find them. I'd have to, even as an adult, I think I'd have to stop and think and say, what does that mean? Right? How do I kind of represent that? I prefer flipping it around like this. Because that's the same mathematical statement here as here. They're hard. They're hard. Now it's yeah, they're doing, doing very well. Okay. We've only been for an hour. <laughs> I'm sure for some of you it seems a lot longer. <laughs> okay. So now we've done a we've done number systems, inequalities. You're guaranteed to get both. Okay. See, just don't fall for the trap like some of the students do, who thinks that, oh, I've got the algebra done, so that's all the paper. Fit half the papers on the stuff that I listed on the front of the document of the PDF that's on the on the website. Yeah. And did you see there? See, if I had said X was an element of natural numbers, I'm saying this in English after having had after raising it. If I said just say it's, it said X was an element of natural numbers instead of the integers. Then I'd have to stop at plus one. Okay. That that is at a time where you have to be a little bit careful. Okay. So that was a, that. That's actually, and, and to be honest with you, not the numbers question. They can get harder than the, the first question I did. They can get harder. See, I just prefer to kind of like teach the course using the. I would have far preferred the exams. And then that would motivate me to read the dry book. Right? Because I could link it to getting rewarded. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Who wants to do a good deed for someone unless it's recognised, right? Unless you get a public recognition, right? So. Well. Now there's one more thing that I want to do on numbers before we do factorizations, which is as follows. What is a square number? So we've we've seen we've seen natural numbers, integers, rational numbers, fractions that is, irrational numbers, and we've seen primes. There's one more important one. It's just my experience when kids come to me, we're very bright and very motivated. What is a square number? Again, this can be a trick question, especially when it comes to sets. So they sometimes use sets or Venn diagrams to test your own numbers. It's loads of marks for these numbers. So it's not even that that's getting used to them. Well, the square numbers is when I take any natural number 
n. I take n, look, I'm going to be fancy because they sometimes use that notation. So n is some natural number. It could be a billion, it could be three, it could be 20, it could be 5,000. And the square numbers are the set of all n squares. So what we do is start with the first, what, what's the first smallest natural number? One. So one squared, which is one. Okay. one. One squared is one by one, isn't it? So n squared equals n multiplied by n. Okay. Can I take the next natural number? That's two squared. Four. Three. Three squared adds, and that's nine. Four. Four squared, which equals 16. Five. Five squared, which equals 25. On um, forever. So these are, these guys here are the first squared numbers. And why do we need that? Why do we need to be a break for this? We'll be factorized. So one of the, you'll always get, so factor, so we, we have these kind of like buzzwords or operational action verbs, I said it to some kids a few years ago, they go, okay, I like that, I remember that. Value, multiply out and simplify. You must know those square numbers. Factorize, and what does factorize mean? Put in brackets. A lot, I just, right, put in brackets. Solve, that must be an equation. Not an equation can't be solved. And that sounds weird. And then graph or chart. Okay. That's the basic building blocks for 50%. And also you have to big chart and solve in paper too. So you get loads and loads of brownie points for being able to do these things. Okay? Loads and loads of brownie points. Here's the gig. Here's what they like to ask, just to give you an example that comes up all the time. If I tell you the set S, the set S is, is the set is the set of all square numbers. See, they take a one for infinity as well, don't they? Every natural number. The natural numbers are unbounded, so therefore the square numbers must be unbounded. A lot of kids will write down this. They'll forget that one is a square number. It's a bit like, and they love playing that game with you guys. It's a bit like saying, what is the smallest? Remember the first question we did, what is the smallest prime? They play that game with depressing regularity, okay? Depressing regularity. I'm sure that I would have fallen for that. And probably not the prime numbers, because I, that, that's why I can mention, you know, that all these Austria, all these mathematicians in mid, in the 1850s or something, getting together in Vienna and saying, what is not prime, okay? So if somebody had said that to me, I'd go, okay, what's not prime? But it stuck in my mind, kind of like guys in, you know, down to Navi type outfits with long periods. Okay, okay. Von is not the problem. Okay, right? You know, so, right? It, you know, so in the Austro-Hungarian Empire, so that was stuck in my mind. See, see, my job is to see. You know what square numbers is. Just keep on reminding you. One is a square number. I would have followed that. Okay. Okay. So why is that important? It's important this factorization. the odd guys out. So when we're doing inequalities, we could treat them like equal signs. So we don't have to worry a jot. We just carry on as usual, like the, like the inequalities in equal sign, until we decide to multiply or divide across by a negative number. And then we have to be careful. But otherwise, we just carry, out, carry on with, in, with impunity. The first prime number is 2. Which by, 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 if you give it some thought, first prime number is two. So, just say I asked you, what's the only even prime number? It must be two, right? Because every, every even number is divided by, it's divisible, it has a factor of two. 
So the only even prime number is 2. Okay. So we need to know this right number. You know, I've, I've told my own students, actually, over the years, in fact, personally, I think the junior cert is, and it sounds weird, I think it's harder than the leading cert. Uh, a, the age group, and B, the questions are so basic that they can be very hard to interpret. In other words, they're kind of like the basic building blocks of mathematics, prime numbers, square numbers. So, let's try one of these factorized and see if we can kind of jog your memory. And this will be in the same question here. Now, this is a hard one. Okay. Factorize 27x squared minus 45, minus 45 x, okay? Right. What can you do with that? The minute you see factorize, if you remember my little, I need to put it in brackets, okay? That's a quadratic, why? Remember, you know, we want to, it's only an hour and a half session, so we have to put it in brackets. So while you're reading that and thinking about it, I, I, not hard, but I would have found it, it looks different than, it looks, it's so easy, it's hard, if that makes sense. Okay. So it's 27x squared minus 45x, isn't that right? So factorize fully each of the following expressions. Okay. Okay. The first thing is, here's the thing, there's no equal sign, is there? So this is what I mean by the, the other subset of problems is when you've got things like algebraic expressions. I know they sound weird. You could go, am I ever going to be rewarded for it? In fact, actually, you're rewarded all the time. So again, yeah, it's, it's like going, look, an algebraic equations. Algebraic expressions have no solutions. I can simplify them, or multiply out and simplify. I can value them, but I can't solve them. Very important, okay? So the first thing is, what's the gate here to keep our life easier? What do these guys have in common? Well, they've got an x and an x, aren't they? First thing to realize, so I can take the x out. So I can say that's equivalent to x times 27x minus 45. Right? Now, what else do they have in common? Hmm. Okay. Well, 3 goes into 45 15 times, isn't it? So they have 3 in common as well. So I can rewrite that as 3x times 9x minus 15. Oh, they've also got another 3 in common. So in other words, they had 9 in common, didn't they? Yeah, they had 9 in common as well. So I can write that as 9x times 3x minus 5. But I can't go any further. I, again, I just have a feeling that when I was your age, I never knew if I got to the end of it, right? right? If I'd gone the whole way. Now, a teacher did show me this many years later, right? Because I'd ask them, you know, I'd ask sometimes, you know, it's very experienced teachers compared to me, I'd say, uh, how do you kind of, see, I'd say, that's not in brackets, you know, that kind of way. I, I, kind of, I kind of feel comfortable, it doesn't fit into my, I'm not using the minus B formula, there aren't, usually when I say two brackets, there's two, uh, there's two kind of entries in each bracket, aren't they? And he said, you can also write that as 9x minus 0 times 3x minus 5. I don't know if that helps. Do you see that? So that kind of looks like the usual thing, doesn't it, when you factorize something? Okay. And then, the, now the one below it, now, 6xy, so I'll give you some time to kind of write that down in your little notepad if you're, if you're following along. I distinctly remember not liking these. 
So the way you guys are going to get better at it, as you come to my classes in the new year, <laughs> we're going to make sure that, how do we get better at them? Oh, we've just done 30 years of them. And they're, 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 you know, the, the junior cert, right, you used to call, it, call the inter cert, <laughs> intermediate certificate, uh, this question, I think, has been asked, this kind of question has been asked since the formation of this state. So, I think the first Levy cert and junior cert was set in 1924 or 1925. They've been asking these things since 1925. I did not like these. Seriously, I, I would find them. No, it depends on which which types. I would have far preferred x squared minus five x plus four or something. If we approach them without kind of like without being in awe of them, we should do okay. So six x y. Write this on the board. Minus three s y. Minus forty x. Plus 2st. Okay. Right. Okay. So that's that expression here, so that's okay. Well, what can I do with that? Well, first of all, it looks like a jumble, doesn't it? The only thing I see, first of all, now a kid last year, what he said to me was, Barry, was the only four I said to the public. All right, what the problem is, I sometimes get mixed up with the negatives and the positives, and I said, oh my gosh, that never happened to me. <laughs> right, okay, so, what I like here, though, is, you go, okay, I try and look at the numbers in front of the things, it, it depends on how hard they are. See, three goes into six twice, doesn't it? And two goes into four twice. So at least it starts with that must be, I think, linked with that, because there's a factor of two, right? Remember, what we're trying to do is get them into brackets. So we're trying to get them into something like that, dot, 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 okay? That's what I mean, factorize both brackets. So, first of all, see, those two look like they belong together, because three goes into six twice. And also, they look like they belong together, two goes into four twice. And that's, that's usually the payoff. And look, they have a thing in common Y, don't they? And the lines on the right have something in common, which is T. So the way I try to kind of sort these out, guys, in my mind, is I need to group two, I need to put them into two pairs. Okay. And they won't always be in order. And I wouldn't worry about the negative sign to start with. Okay. Like the way I kind of try and kind of because there's no real rule to follow. The books might tell you there's a rule to follow, but I, I just don't believe that. I think you just I think it's one of those things that's kind of like it's a little bit of like a puzzle. You know, you just you know. do you do you think you'd like to buy a textbook that tells you how to solve a crossword? I'd say not solve a jigsaw puzzle. I don't I think that's a very good investment of time or money. So they have three white covers, so I can definitely do this. Because they're the two things they have in common, isn't it? And they'll be very naughty here because S can sometimes look like 5. Just like B can sometimes look like 6. I don't know if anybody's ever experienced that, right? Okay? And what do these two guys have in common? They've got 2 and T. Aha. So we know we're almost there. Okay, we know we're almost there, but not quite the cigar. Because 
So now, we can do a little trick here. Now, here's where you need to be good at these minus and pluses. Now, you just have to get used to get good at this. And it's hard to get good at this. Again, because I can't say to you, uh, what do you think of that? That's what that young lad was saying to me um, a couple of years ago, was that he, found, he didn't find the first step I did. He was very bright, very motivated, and a real gent, and a real gentleman. But it was going, he said to me, and he was laughing, he was like, he was like 14 going on 60, everything, right? Like he'd been on the planet before. And he said, I don't know, Barry. And he cried his little finger like this, and he goes, I don't know, Barry, I can get, I don't mind the first one. And he had a very small voice like this. He goes, but going from here to here, I do find difficult. So it goes back to the point, it's, it's basics, isn't it? Right? Right? It's the basics. And I must admit, I think I find that weird too. I put it like this. Maybe this confuses the matter. There's always a possibility that uh, one can confuse the matter. And some of you won't find that difficult at all. I, I don't think I found it too difficult as a kid, but, but I definitely, it wouldn't mean that I wouldn't make errors, right? All I'm saying there is, see here, just imagine there are no letters. Plus six by minus five. That's plus, that's plus six multiplied by minus five, isn't it? All I'm saying is that's equivalent to minus six by plus five. I think that helps. That's all that's saying here, going from here to here. I'm just saying six multiplied by minus five is the same as minus six by Plus five. And then I'm done, aren't I, here? Because now all I have to do is. And that's the answer to that question. Now, the next part of it is going to apply algebra, it's going to simultaneous equations. But I'll skip that. But here, on that question we've just gotten, right? Like here, that question 15. This is my numbering system. Um, with the flake at the end, right, that would have been a 10% question, 11%, right? And the stuff on the factorization set has to come up every year. Now, let's do more factorizations, okay? Now, this is the difference of two squares. So this is your more, form, more traditional ones, okay? So hopefully you can all see that. I hope we can all see that. So, if, now. See, remember I said, so this is the difference of two squares, the first one. So you should be able to see that straight away, I hope. But again, again, nothing, not, no fault of your own is that it might have been quite a while since, you, um, since you've done any of these questions. See, that's where you have to recognize 9 is 3 squared and 81 is 9 squared. So they're both square numbers. Remember I wrote down the set of all square numbers earlier. So that's, for those kind of things, they should be straightforward enough, I hope. If they're not, it's only because you're out of practice. Okay. And this one, I'm not going to write it on the board, I'm going to use the Apple Pencil. First thing to realize is, now hopefully this will be okay. Bracket 3x squared. Hopefully everybody realizes, because that's just kind of like work it backwards. And also notice the way, see the x is the variable, and see the way I use kind of the harsh x for the multiplication symbol. So the x is like the Chanel symbol. So the way I write x is like 
two active axes. But my multiplication is this. Okay. So you're still allowed to use the multiplication symbol. And that must be 9x squared, doesn't it? So students, some students don't like that, where you can, you know, 9x squared must be 3x all squared. Now the 81 should be easier. So once I realize that, all I need to write down for that one is 3x minus 9, or 3x plus 9. And again, you're guaranteed to get one of those in the exam. That's just the difference of two squares. Now, what about the next one? Now, this is a DB pre, so it's slightly harder, isn't it? Because usually it's nicer when we don't have a number in front of three. So the first thing to realize, this is a quadratic, isn't it, guys? Because the highest power of x is x squared. Okay. Okay. The good thing, though, is what type of number is 3? Well, it's a natural number. So 3 is number at the end. Yeah. It's odd. <laughs> yeah, it's odd. But it's also prime, isn't it? Remember when we factorise, we're trying to put them in brackets. Now, there are times when, when students uh, say to me, well, you know, the, the books do have good techniques to approach this. I kind of tend to, try to, tend to kind of make it more kind of like, can we work it out ourselves without the book? So what I'm trying to do here is put it in brackets, aren't I? But 3 is prime. And now, they, now here's the thing. Remember I said the minus b formula in my description. If they ask me to find, to solve this, there'll be an equal sign. But it only has to be factorised. It. So it's going to have a, you just have to get used to the accent of the exam. So they're, they're, they're actually telling you it's solvable. It's easy. But see, because 3 is a prime, I can only write it like that. So in the first two slots, in the two brackets, it must be those two, mustn't it? And that's the whole key, okay? And then I'm going to have and this one young student, like, then I'm going to have two numbers that go in there. They're going to be integers, okay? In this case, right? Integers, right? So I just want, and what do those two red numbers must I add up to? When I multiply those two red numbers, I must get 10, mustn't I? See, because this one multiplies by this one, because they're two numbers, must give me that. I think that's easy. No, when I say easy, it's a better strategy, I think. So those two empty slots there are going to be plus or minus some kind of um, number, aren't they? Now, so those two numbers and those two empty slots, guys. See the way that I've noticed that three is a prime. So that's the, that's the giveaway, isn't it? That I should write down as 3x and x. In the two first in the two brackets. Now ten equals ten by one or one by ten. Ten equals five by two. But ten also equals minus ten by one. My minus one. It must be one or the other. But the key is the reason why I know. The reason why I can eliminate that guy and that guy is because the numbers must add up to minus 17. Ah, right? You kind of get good at them. So if I put 10 in, that might give me 13 or 30. That's not work. So it must be minus 5 by minus 2. I, I think you just have to, it's, it's almost like playing a sport. You know the way when you start, I don't know, swimming maybe? You're learning kind of like, you know, how to do the backstroke or something like that. You're trashing around in the pool. Or when you first start playing football, you might be very fast running, but kind of like getting control over the football or over the rugby ball. It takes a while, but then suddenly you get good at it. I think it's a bit like these. You just get, 
You just get, you know, yeah, you just get used to it. You have to do loads of them. And my students just get to a point where they go, yeah, it must be that. So it must be, 3 by 5 is 15, isn't it? Plus 2 is 17. So it must be this. And I no, used no big cross, did I? It was just kind of a process of, okay. So I've got 3, 5, and 2 running around. So but 3 by 2 would be 6, plus 5, that would be 11. So if that had been minus 11, that would be okay. That would be the other way around. But it's minus 17. Okay. I think that's easy enough. Now, now you track that for a few moments from the last few minutes I've got that. And I'll do that on the board. See, this is one of those again, isn't it? Again, factorizing. That's 4a minus 6bc plus 3ac minus 8b. And again, this is putting in brackets, isn't it, guys? But how do I do that? See, this is slightly harder, I think. Well, not hard, they're not hard. You just have to get used to them. Well, that's going to be easier to an extent because I can try the numbers. Well, 4 is to 3 is the same as 8 is to 6. Ratio wise. So I'd say the 4 and 3 go together. And, the, and so this is quite might a bit easier than the last one, I personally think. No, I don't think any of them are easy when you see them in the exam, no matter how cocky or arrogant, you know, how confident you are, should I say. But look, <coughs> A goes with A, and B goes with B. So that seems obvious. So I'm going to write that again as 4A plus 3AC. So in other words, I'm setting them up as pairs, aren't I? Okay. But 4 and 3 have no... Their, their lowest common uh, non measure is one, isn't it? Common factor is one, should I say. So that's going to be A times 4 plus 3C. And I'm just going to do the same here. They've got that minus B times 6C minus, I say, plus 8. But these guys have, what do these guys have common? 2. So I can rewrite that as a times 4 plus 3c minus 2b times 3c plus 4. Okay. Well, that's equivalent to 3c plus 4. So 4 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 4, isn't it? Okay. So that's a times 3c plus 4 minus 2b times 3c plus 4. So it's going to be a minus 2b times 3c plus 4. That wasn't too bad, was it? But again, there was a bit of that minus action going on, wasn't there? Okay? A bit of minus action going on. Okay. Alrighty, guys. I think that's... Uh, you've had enough of me. I've got class starting in, in a few minutes. So it's 11.30. So um, it was great to see you. I don't know who you are. Uh, I hope that was of some help. But what we did there was about, um, in an hour and a half, we did about using the same te different techniques, etc., and how recyclable they are, we did about 40% um, of a paper one. Okay? But do beware, you know, on the front of my document, do beware, as I say, these lads here, uh, ratios. Sets and Venn diagrams are good at unless they become very, very naughty, and they have in the past. Speed and distance can be just very kind of like um, counterintuitive. Indices, students don't like indices, but I think you get good at them. Patterns, uh, 
I think if you teach yourself, if you, you know, if we do it a little bit more difficult than the actual textbooks, then you're covered. So a bit harder to get used to, but once you kind of conquer it, then you at least you can rest easy on that one. Financial maths is just a, it, it, at our age, it's because financial maths is great when you get older because you can make money with it. <laughs> but when you when you don't have a bank account, it's not that interesting. And certs, and certs are a bit tricky to get used to, but certs are really just a a subset, so to speak, of indices. Really, guys, it was lovely meeting you, and uh, I hope you that just looking out the window here. The rain has stopped, so maybe post-match you'll be able to go and get some fresh air or something or sit in the car. Alright guys, bye.